But in any case, that means they still left some room by pushing this over to the Schedule 1 Part 2 for particular situations. What is your situation? The situation... Such as the reservists, performing artists, and fee-based government officials. So you might not have anyone, you know, that's fairly rare to run into those particular situations. But if you do, that's where you go. It's more likely you'll run into a situation where people are still asking about prior rules and whatnot. And you got to kind of explain the, the change. Jane! Jane! So let's just add a couple of these. I'm going to jump on over to the business expenses, to the reservists. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm on 2106, a military reservists, uh, net unreimbursed travel expenses. So I'm going to say unreimbursed travel expenses. And I'll say, let's put all of them here. And then let's say there was travel uh travel while away and let's go boom and then if i pull that over now we should have the form 2106 2106 which is calculating uh the expenses in the vehicle expense we'll talk more about this uh worksheet for vehicles and miles and stuff when we apply it to calculation of like the mileage method and whatnot with a schedule c versus actual but just to get an idea here, the total expenses of the 1,000, and then that's pulling on over to the schedule one. So the schedule one on page two, I should say, now has the 1,000 here, and that will sum up down below, and that's gonna pull into this 1040, now not on the schedule A, but the above the line deduction, which means that even if you are not itemizing, you're not a wealthy individual, mostly wealthy individuals or people more affluent will be itemizing. That means that if you qualify here, you can still get it because it's the above the line deduction, bringing the adjusted gross income down to the 99,000, which also has an impact on the, the, the phase outs of like deductions and credits. So that's actually beneficial too. If you have a lowering here, as opposed to just a lowering of the taxable income through an itemized deduction because of the benefit of usually with the phase outs of other types of things, standard deduction gets the tax down to the 8650. So let's, I'm not going to do it in, in Excel because it's fairly straightforward. And, and, uh, so I just want to uh, do it in here. So let's do another one. Let's say we jump on over and let's say we have a performing artist. So I've never dealt with a performing artist situation for, but we're going to say they're a qualified performing artist. All right, cool. I'm an artist. I occupation of different duh, 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 qualified performing artist. So again, you have the similar situation where you've got the, you know, the schedule 2106 pulling into the schedule one and page two which pulls in to the form 1040. And then the other, the other item is the free business, uh, the fee business. So I'm going to go here and say, okay. And then we would check, uh, this one out qualified performing artist versus uh, handicap or a fee based government official, which would be a three, which would be the entry number, which again, and this is just in Lacert tax software, which would populate the 2106 once again, and then pull it, pull it into this schedule one page two, which then ultimately pulls into the form 1040. So the point being there, it's much more restrictive than it was before. And you'd have to have people that are going to qualify for those particular uh, areas in order to be in order to be uh, benefiting from that particular deduction or adjustment to, to gross income.